Welcome to the Careers by Jen podcast, episode 216. Today on the podcast, Jen's theme is how not to take the job if it isn't quite right. Isn't it kind of like drugs? Just say no. Either that or get yourself a mortgage and see how quickly that job gets pretty right after all. You're listening to the Careers by Jen podcast with me, Jen Swanson, the podcast that helps you to get the job, love your work, and advance your career. Of course, it depends on your situation. Sometimes you have to take a job that isn't quite the right fit because you have to have a, have, have a job yesterday, and this one will do. That's one situation. But if you're looking to start a career or you want to change jobs while you're in a job, you just want to make a change, or you even have a little bit of lead time in your job search, then I'm going to recommend that you don't take a job that is offered if it doesn't feel quite right. So how to spot red flags and pay attention to them right after this. You've updated your resume, you've sent it out, and you've been selected for an interview. Congratulations. And now you want to get ready, really ready. This is where Careers by Jen can help. We have a comprehensive online course called How to Ace a Job Interview When You Haven't Interviewed in a Long Time. This video-based course is jam-packed with information, advice, and exercises to help you get completely prepared to walk into an interview situation with confidence. From exactly what to prepare in advance, to how to answer common questions, to what questions you might ask the interviewer, and so much more, this course is designed to get you ready. Visit careersbygen.com and click on Training Resources to see the curriculum, preview a couple of the introductory lessons, and see what others who have taken the course are saying about it. Visit careersbygen.com and get ready to ace your next interview. I once took a job that seemed like it would be a good one. It had better hours than the alternative I was looking at, and it was in an area of health care that I was interested in. I lasted three months less a day. <laughs> it was a situation where the job I had been in previously was being changed such that I had to bump into something else with my seniority. It was in a union setting and I was being displaced. And so um, I had a few options. And this job that I took and then bailed out of uh, was because I couldn't stand it in the end. Um, but it was so full of red flags when I was interviewing for that position that for some reason I didn't see, didn't want to see, or just ignored, that it's rather amazing that I lasted the three months less a day in the first place. In any case, the job I ended up in after that one was far better in every respect, even if it didn't have... Uh, the same perfect kind of hours. So, so what to do? What if you can get the job in question, but you aren't sure you want it? What if it sounds okay, but something more interesting might come along later? And if you accept this one now, you'd be closing your options for something better in the future. Well, let's talk about red flags and the things that maybe you want to pay attention to. And I apologize as we go into this for my stuffed up sound. I think a cold is coming on here or maybe it's the allergy season or something, but all of a sudden my throat is scratchy and my nose is stuffed up and, um, and this is the time that I've got to record the podcast. So you'll have to, uh, you'll have to put up with it or, <laughs> or not. <laughs> All right. Well, red flags, there could be many. I'm going to highlight just a few. And as with much of what we do here at Careers by Jen, I highly recommend self-awareness, knowing yourself, knowing your capabilities as best you can, knowing what you want, and especially knowing what you don't want in your job search. This will make it a whole lot smoother. So self-awareness is kind of what I promote, and especially in this important step of choosing what you want to spend a lot of your time doing to in exchange for, for money for the next 
who knows how many years. Um, If you know yourself and trust your instinct, then you will see the red flags waving from a mile away. Then, of course, you will have to acknowledge them and decide if you will heed their uh, sound warning. Your gut knows even before your brain does sometimes. And so that's why we call it gut instinct. And lots of times we don't pay attention to that, which is unfortunate because I think your gut is very accurate. So before we we begin, let me say that the hiring process is long. It's involved and it's an expensive process for the hiring company. It takes hours and hours of vetting resumes, of interviewing people, of checking references, and then finally offering something to a candidate. So if you know early on that red flags are coming up for you, it's fair to either stop the process before more time and effort is expended on you or to raise the issue or the issues you're worrying about with the person that's interviewing you in case you have misinterpreted something and your worries can be easily resolved. It's it's not fair and it's not professional to get all the way to the end of a process and then to turn down the offer if you haven't expressed any of your concerns before that time. Now, Sometimes you just aren't sure and you don't know until the very end whether or not you want to take it. And and that's fair enough if you're still actively discerning. But I think if you decide early on that the job is not the right fit, uh, you can turn it down. And it would be better form to do so as soon as you realize that it's not going to be for you or that it's not sitting well with you. Then the hiring team can move on and spend their time, their energy, and their funds on other candidates. So that's just one thing I wanted to say from a hiring team perspective, is try not to waste people's time if you can possibly help it. So what might be some of the signs that the job is not for you after all? I have eight possible red flags to share with you. The first one is that you discover that you don't like or you don't trust the person who's interviewing you. During the process, maybe you find that you really don't like the person who you're sitting with who's giving you the interview or or for whatever reason, you don't trust them. Something has happened, something they've said, something in their manner, and you just don't trust them right off the bat. Well, this might not ever change. And so why would you want to continue to work with or work for someone that you don't respect or you don't like or you don't trust? So if this comes up for you during any part of the hiring process, I would suggest that you think long and hard on that one because it's imperative that you trust the people that you work for or it's not going to be a healthy or safe environment for you. That's the first red flag. You need to like and trust the people who are telling you things and offering you things and and, uh, inviting you in to their workplace. The second red flag is that you find a conflict in values between your own and those of the company. I have a couple of family members who have experienced working for organizations whose values and ways of operating clashed with their own values. And it's hard, a hard thing to decide to leave a job after you've taken it and after you've spent time learning it and you'd, you've invested yourself in it. But if you get the inkling going in that there might be a difference in values, a difference that is an obstacle, a difference that is big enough that it gives you pause, that likely won't change and will only amplify going forward. One of my family members felt that she wasn't able to do her own job to her her high professional standards in a way that felt safe for her because the organization seemed to care more about money than it did about client safety. And finally, she couldn't watch what was happening anymore in the name of the bottom line. And so she left. She quit the job. But she, had she had any idea beforehand going in, it would have been far easier, far less heartache, and far better to just turn the job down, to not accept the job in the first place than it was to suffer the consequences of a 
a very real clash in values. And so if you have any hint that what this company stands for or some way in which it operates is going to uh, clash or I can't think of a better word, clash or uh, bang up against your own value system, then you really want to give that one uh, a good think before you say yes. The third red flag is that the salary you thought was the case or that the hiring manager had discussed with you during the interview process ends up being a lot lower in the actual job offer. This feels like pulling a fast one when what is suggested or discussed or promised in the interview ends up being vastly different on paper when the offer comes in well then you know there's a problem what you were promised is already different than what is actually going to happen so pay attention to the details and I would suggest you question everything before you commit uh, before you commit to anything. So read the fine print. Ask to see information in writing. Be diligent in this area, especially if the difference is a big one. This is not a good thing. So make sure that you've paid attention to the details, that you're not so excited about some of the, the promises and the benefits that you don't actually read the documentation. So take time in this. Slow down in this to make sure that what you're actually signing on to do is what was discussed and what was promised in the interview process. The fourth red flag is if you've been treated with disrespect or you've been treated unprofessionally during any part of the hiring process. Disrespect and unprofessional behavior is not apt to change once you are hired. These are major flags that need paying attention to. You want to be treated fairly and well, and with respect as an employee. And anything that might suggest otherwise is something to pay attention to, something to notice. We spend so much time at work that it is absolutely key that we feel comfortable and safe and valued most of the time, if not all of the time, in the workplace. If, if you don't even get that in the hiring process, well then... I highly doubt it's going to change in the actual work environment. So you want to pay attention to that, to any disrespect, any unprofessional behavior that happens in the process, whether it be on the telephone, by email correspondence, or face-to-face. -face. Pay attention to that kind of behavior and make sure that, um, that you're, you know what's happening going in. The fifth red flag is, uh, is if you find out there's a high turnover in the position or in the workplace that you're applying to. High turnover is a huge red flag. Why are people leaving so frequently? What is happening in the culture of the organization that people are not staying? Are you able to speak to any of the people who have left? That would be something that would be important to do. Can you find out why they left? Do you know what the company is doing about this high turnover rate? These are serious questions to ask yourself and to ask others if you're able to before taking a job in a place with a high turnover. You want stability and you want longevity in the workplace. And so unless the turnover is because people are moving up the hierarchy, which is good and exciting actually and, and could be a, a benefit, um, if that's the case, then it's totally different. That's good. But if if they're leaving altogether, um, then try to find out why and what's going on that's making people jump ship. It could be that it's a toxic work environment that looks all shiny and pretty on the surface until you get in there and discover what's really going on. So you want to make sure that you don't put yourself in that situation if you can at all help it and pay attention to things like turnover. Um, and, uh, and again, if it's, if it's because people are being offered advancement opportunities, that's different. But, um, if it's, uh, if it's not about that, then you want to know that in the first place. 
The sixth thing is if you've been promised the moon, (laughs) get the promises in writing if you are worried that they sound too good to be true, if they sound too amazing, if they sound uh, like too much, it might just be so. And the person is saying whatever they can say to get you hired and signed on. So can you speak to other employees about these promises? Can you see the company manuals or... um, documentation, policy books, are there ways to verify these big promises before you accept the position? Do people really advance as quickly as you've been told? Are the benefits really as amazing as the hiring person claims they are? Check your information carefully if you think it might be overblown, because only then can you make a good and safe decision about the situation. So if they're promising you what seems like too much or too big of a deal, just check it out. It might be true, which would be amazing, but you just want to make sure of that before you get yourself in somewhere uh, that might be more difficult to extricate yourself from. The seventh thing that I have for you today is uh, a red flag would be if there are unanswered questions uh, or questions that you've asked that people are avoiding answering. If you've not gotten satisfactory answers to your questions, you know at the end of an interview where people always say, do you have any questions for me or do you have any questions for us if it's a panel? Um, And you always, always, always want to have questions. In the interview skills course that I teach online, um, uh, I suggest always having at least two or three questions for the person doing the interview. Um, so if, the, if, if you are asking your questions and have not received satisfactory answers, or if the hiring person avoids answering, blatantly avoids answering some of your questions, well, this could be bad. This could be a red flag. If they aren't able to answer, perhaps they could get someone else who could come and talk to you and answer your question. Maybe they just don't know the answer. That's possible. But then they should find someone who does. What is going on that you are not being made aware of if someone is avoiding your question, uh, answering your question, or uh, is deflecting your question? If you have asked clear questions and you're not happy or satisfied with how they've been answered, then maybe you have more questions to ask before feeling ready to accept an offer. It would be very fair to state that you don't have quite enough information yet to make a decision and that you have some follow-up questions. That would be completely legitimate. So make sure that your questions are answered as, as fully as possible and that you are satisfied with those answers, and that uh, people aren't avoiding answering anything that you are asking. That's important. And the eighth thing is, if the job actually doesn't fit into your dreams or goals for your future, then what are you doing? Does this job possibility light you up inside? Is it interesting? Does does it make you want to know more about it? Does it fit into your vision for the next many years of your life? Will this position, this role, this career, will it further you toward your goals or dreams? Or will it not? Is this a job for the sake of a paycheck? Or is it something that will feed you in other ways? If the answer is no, then why are you even considering it? And again, there are many reasons why we take jobs that don't suit us, and I know that I've done it, and I know that lots of people have too. But if you can pay attention to what it is that is happening within you, to your own red flags and the reasons for them, to your own sense of excitement uh, around the job or not, uh, if it's kind of a meh situation and it's you're not considering it for the right reasons, uh, then you might want to think about that a little bit more before saying yes. Now, again, if you're in a situation where you absolutely have to have an income right now, then that's that's different. We have to do things sometimes that we don't particularly want to, and hopefully it will be still in some way a useful experience. But my hope is that you will be able to happily accept 
the right job offer when it does come along without reservation. And that will happen best if you pay attention to your gut, you pay attention to any red red flags that pop up and that you're able to satisfy your questions around these red flags fully before saying thank you. I would very much like to accept this job. You've been listening to Careers by Jen with Jen Swanson. If you like what you heard, please share this. You know, if every single person listening today shared this episode with just one friend, our audience would be twice as big just like that. And the more people we can help with our content, the better. So help out a friend and help grow our audience by sharing this show with someone you know who would benefit from the content. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that and together we can make a difference. Until next time, take good care.